Hi guys, Jessica here. I'm doing a few videos in a row that are all answers to questions people DM'd me, and I'm choosing to do it in this video form because I think it's questions that apply to more than just the individual who wrote me. So here we are in an informal Q&A, and this question is about terrible twos. So if you're new here, I am a mom of three kids. I have a six-year-old, a two-year-old, and now a one-year-old because my daughter turned one this weekend and I make content for growing families. If you are not already following me on Instagram, I am Jess underscore Hover. And if you need more support in your parenting journey, we have a Facebook group called Jess Hover and Friends, which has really great people in there. And then in the next week or two, we're gonna be switching over to a new platform for those of you who want further connection opportunities, possibly making friends in your area. I will invite you to that soon, so stay tuned. And thank you so much to everybody who has been shopping Very Good Mothers Club, our small business. Hey, if you don't know, they have recently been talking a lot on the news about how there's a shortage of people to be able to work different jobs. And one major thing that's going to be affected is the ability for small businesses to ship out products in time for Christmas. So please, if you are going to be ordering gifts for your loved ones for Christmas, will you order from us now so that we can ensure that we get things to you in time? Um, it's like a big deal. Even the White House is talking about the fact that people need to be ordering gifts now or planning to order things um, from like shops in real life. So shop for, <laughs> I'm like stuttering, what am I saying? Shop for Christmas. Uh, no. So if you haven't already, I'm not editing this. <laughs> so you're just seeing all of these. Um, so yeah, shop small business, our small business for your friends and loved ones for Christmas. Okay. And we'll ship it out to you and then you can tuck it away in a closet and have it in time for Christmas. All right. Terrible twos. People ask me about terrible twos. Do I have any tips? I am only about three months into having a terrible two-year-old <laughs> who's actually awesome. And I love him. And I think two is such a cute age. I loved it with Eloise and I love it with Wilson. They're entirely different kids, very, very different personalities, like a thousand percent, I think. And even the way of doing parenting stuff is looking a lot different, but I can just speak right now to Wilson, my experience with him. He turned two at the end of June. And here are my top tips for the terrible twos. We should say the other thing they say, terrific twos, terrific twos. Okay, one, limit choices. So when I go to give Wilson an option for things, which I love to do because he loves to choose things, I limit the options to about two choices. Wilson, do you want to wear your yellow Crocs or your cool shoes, which are the Nikes that, that Becca got him? And then he chooses from there. So giving him a chance to make a decision because he's a big boy and he wants to make decisions, but keeping the options to be limited. Um, the more options I give him, the more I find he's overwhelmed and maybe it ends up leading to some sort of freak out. Um, snacks and sleep. So my son, his personality is one where he's like happy-go-lucky, pretty funny, kind of a comedian until he's hungry or tired. And then he lashes out irrationally. He's crying. He's very upset. He's unreasonable. He's too. It's normal. But uh, snacks or eating meals <laughs> and sleep, they really help to steer us away from the tantrums. So anytime Wilson cries, my main question is, has he eaten? Because I know his sleep schedule already, so I don't have to wonder about that. Um, yeah, food, really important. I have heard, this is just a rumor, I have no um, data to show you, but um, I mean, I guess my own life kind of proves this. Little boys, apparently their blood sugar is very sensitive. I feel like girls too though, but boys, from what I heard, if they don't eat, their blood sugar goes down and their temper tantrum goes up and they need to be well fed. Do I know if this is true? I don't know. Basically, all I'm saying is the data shows that kids need to eat and adults need to eat. Pack snacks for yourself too. You'll be much more patient. Okay, consistent consequences. I know that there are styles of parenting that don't involve any sort of punishment and I'm trying to learn about it and I don't really get it. So I'm not speaking as somebody who's against that form of parenting. I'm 
not really against most forms of parenting. I don't really know most forms of parenting and my style is um, not super analytical. So I don't tend to like study things unless I'm in a desperate moment. Most of my Googling of things happens in desperation, like middle of the night, my child's not sleeping. That's when I'll Google, how do you make a baby sleep? So I'm not the kind of parent, which some of you are, which um, you guys search things ahead of time. You think ahead and you're like, ah, I'm gonna need to know how to handle the terrible twos. And then you research it. That's not me. And I think you are probably better at more things than me. So feel free if that's you, leave comments because maybe you have helpful information I don't have. All of that to say, in my house, we do punish our kids. Not in a crazy way. My kids are safe and healthy and happy. <laughs> um, but I, I know there's a style that doesn't do that and I'm happy to learn about it. I just don't do it and I can't do what I don't know. So what I know is when my son has a freak out, um, one of our go-to things is, hey buddy, you need to calm down. I mean, we like get on his level. We're really listening types. Um, neither Sean nor I is like a big temper, tan uh, like we don't have big tempers. Um, so that's, that's our personality, but basically it's like, Hey bud, if you're going to freak out at your sister, or if you're going to act like this, then you need to go sit in your room for two minutes. And then we, we usually he'll like chill. Um, if he doesn't, we move him to his room. We set a timer for two minutes. As soon as the timer goes off, we go in there and we pull him back out and we proceed from there. Um, we just started doing that like two weeks ago and it actually has really helped. I don't know if maybe he started acting out and throwing big fits because his little sister cries when she needs something. And so then maybe he was kind of like, oh, she cries when she needs it. So now I'm gonna cry if I need it. I don't know, he can talk. He's very good at talking. So not really sure, but for us, we do a two minute timeout. We do a warning, a two minute timeout, and we pull them out and it seems to be helping. Um, I said, oh, don't erupt. So we don't erupt in like, being upset or angry or yelling or something unless safety is involved so like if he is going to run in the street um i will scream like i i i don't even really think about that it just comes out of me but i'm gonna try not to scream at things that aren't really safety issues even if i feel like i'm boiling inside and i'm gonna lose my mind i might then say to sean like I'm gonna lose my mind, I need you to take care of this so I can take some deep breaths. But trying to determine between like the, the safety issues which require some like real loud, like, ah, don't do that. And then the moments that are just him being upsetting, me being upset, and now I raise my voice and lose my temper because I'm so upset. Um, so we try and separate that. Um, sometimes we ignore him, that's real. <laughs> Basically like we try to ignore some stuff, like if he's just, doing things that he knows not to do over and over try not to like give into it or get really upset about it we'll respond to it and then like all right buddy you can keep doing that but that's not how we're going to do this thing so kind of learning the art of ignoring where we're necessary also really affirming the great behavior cheering for it hollering like when he eats his food sometimes we all celebrate i know that sounds exhausting it's it's not that bad because we have eloise there and she thinks it's fun and we have jewels and she loves to clap so i don't know do your style do your style, but these are things we're doing. Um, distracting. Oh, sometimes it's hard to be like, don't do that, bud. Don't do that. Stop doing that. Don't, don't, don't. Because I feel like then all he wants to do is the thing we're saying don't do. So it's been much more effective to be like, don't do that. Do this. And then we do it. Um, teaching him how to share is tricky. He's at the age where he's really excited about his possessions. Like they're his. So sharing's hard. He has siblings though, so naturally sharing is kind of something that he's having to do and sometimes it causes little fights and sometimes it works out. So I don't know. I don't really have any tips to that other than I want him to be somebody who knows how to share. So we're kind of trying to figure out how do we do it. A lot of timers are involved. Like, okay, Eloise, you get one minute. And now, all right, Wilson, you get one minute. And Jules just has no idea. She's happy. I put on here chicken nuggets. Um, more my, sorry, airplane. There's airplanes that fly over food that I know he likes. So sometimes it's a battle to get him to eat. So we try and have the fridge stocked with some things he does like. So we have other things we have him try. And then if he doesn't eat them, we just have to make sure he's fed. Otherwise he loses his mind and I lose mine. It's just not fun. So um, chicken nuggets is an item that he likes. So I just try and have some stuff I know he likes at every meal and then some of the new stuff. And sometimes he likes those and sometimes he doesn't. And sometimes he changes his mind and I don't know, it's, it's hard. 
And then I, last thing I said is do what works until it doesn't. And then do that until it doesn't work anymore. And then do the next thing. And maybe let us know what you do because then we can all benefit from your great wisdom. Uh, terrible twos are awesome. They're learning so much. They're developing so fast. So that's, I think, where sometimes it gets terrible because it's just a bit challenging. But I find that it's really fun. I love their personalities developing. Um, oh, I also have on here that I didn't read. Outside has always been better than inside for us. So we try and get Wilson outside as much as we can and run, have him run like crazy. Like any physical activity to tire him out and stimulate him is really good. Do I let my kids watch screens? Yes, I do. Um, no, I do. I, I don't know. I know that some people don't and I think that's great. I do sometimes, but I do try and monitor it because too much screen time, then there's a lot of meltdowns. So I do a bit of screen time. Our go-to shows are like Little Baby Bum and we switch it to Spanish and um, Coco Melon. Who doesn't love Coco Melon? The Wiggles. Uh, and I can't remember what else. I don't, I'm sure there's other things. Artie, something about like art on Amazon. I don't know. There's good shows out there for kids that don't feel like you're melting their brains entirely. But my go-to is Little Baby Bum in Spanish. Oh, Peppa Pig. Oh my gosh, Daniel Tiger actually. He's the kindest tiger. If you want your kid to pick up some good behaviors, <laughs> some good habits, Daniel Tiger is just a good guy. So, um, okay, that's all. All right, thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys.